Hey guys, as some of you know, last year I finally did the full switch over to mirrorless camera system. And after shooting it this past year at weddings and really putting it to the test, I'm excited to do an update on what I bring with me in my wedding day camera bag. What I use and when, how I've switched things up, and also towards the end, some new pieces of gear I'm looking at adding this year. So first up is camera bodies. And I used to bring with me the <laughs> D4 weddings, which is a heavy beast. And for a while, I was shooting both with the D4 and the mirrorless camera system. But over the last year, I've fully switched over now that I have the Z6 II with the dual card slots, which is an absolute necessity for weddings. Really loving it. It is a fantastic camera. It's what I'm recommending to everybody now. If you're in the market for a new camera body, I would 100% go mirrorless it is completely replaced what used to be my right hand but i'm loving it i'm actually really excited to test out the new z9 that just came out it's on back order so i'm just waiting for that to come in to really do a side-by-side -side comparison with nikon's new z9 against the z6 II. some of the main considerations i'm going to be looking at are really the differences in the sensor since it's a new sensor and how the low light capability is, which is particularly important for weddings. So if that's something you'd be interested in, drop a comment and let me know. And when I can get my hands on it, I may do a video breaking down the differences. Another thing I added into my kit this past year is a dual camera strap. This is the whole fast money maker in size skinny with water buffalo. I really love this camera strap. It molds really nicely to your shoulders and just really feels like an extension of yourself. I have one side attached to my Z6 II and the other side attached to my backup Z6 so that I can really fluidly shoot with two cameras throughout the wedding day. In the past, I've actually been anti-strap and have hated wearing straps at weddings. It felt very constrictive. I felt like a lot more fluid and creative just having a single camera and being able to like really quickly switch out lenses. But because the new mirrorless bodies are so much lighter, I feel a lot more free being able to use a dual camera system and I am loving the whole fast. Next, let's talk lenses. I added a couple new mirrorless lenses to my kit from a Nikon's S series. And the one that's on my camera right now is the 85 1.8 S. The previous 85 I had, uh, Nikon's 85 1.4, absolutely loved. It was my all time favorite lens, but it did not work with the adapter. So I decided to test out uh, the 85 1.8 mirrorless and I've fallen in love with it. It's actually replaced my old 85, which is a big deal because that was like my dreamy, like dream lens. This lens is super sharp. The chromatic aberration, which is like that purple fringing that you can get on your images when shooting in strong backlight or really contrasty scenarios is pretty much completely gone now. So this is great for CA, super sharp, beautiful bokeh, really phenomenal lens. I do plan to get Nikon's new 85 1.2, which will be coming out this year. Um, it's rumored to be coming out early this year. So I do plan on changing this lens out with the even faster version once that's available. So if you're in the market for an 85 and you're considering purchasing this or not, you might want to wait for that 1.2. It just depends on what you currently have in your kit. Over the last year, I really loved this lens. Can highly recommend it. Next up is the 35 millimeter 1.8S. I actually, you know, haven't really been a huge 35 millimeter person in the past and this lens has converted me. I've been loving shooting with it and the combination of the 85 1.8 and the 35 millimeter 1.8 has actually pretty much replaced my 24 to 72 .8. Not entirely, I still love this lens. This is still essential for me to have at weddings, but lately I've been really loving the combo of the 85 and the 35. I haven't really been picking up my 24 to 70 as much. Let's put this back on and then we can chat 
adapted lenses. And Nikon's adapter actually works really great. I don't really see a need to replace some of the lenses, particularly my macro lens. I'm really only using that for like those close up ring details on a wedding day. Usually just those details, just like that handful of images. So this is great, works awesome with an adapter. My 24 to 70 2.8, this has always been like kind of a workhorse lens for me on a wedding day. It's great for throughout the entire day from the portraits through the action. And lastly, I cannot go to any wedding without my 70 to 200. For me, this is essential for those ceremony shots to be able to like get in super tight, get that really beautiful compression. This is a 2.8. Oftentimes I'm shooting it within the focal range of 100 millimeter to 200 millimeter to really get that beautiful compression and that beautiful bokeh in my images. So I love this for, for ceremonies. I love this for the speeches. I love this for first dance. And then if I have enough room, I also love using it for portraits. It just depends on how big of a space we have outdoors to be able to back up and really zoom in to take advantage of that compression. But this is a beautiful must have lens, especially for weddings, but I'll even bring it to my engagement shoots. Really do love this lens. So I'll just show real quick how this goes on with the adapter. So the only thing with the adapter is tiny little body big, big lens, but it, it works. And uh, with the adapter, it actually works really well. So that's it for cameras and lenses. As far as like what I shoot with throughout a wedding day, usually the 85 I'm using for the portraits. I'm using it for the getting ready details and like close-ups of the bride, kind of getting her hair and makeup done. This is a really beautiful portrait lens. So I'm using this throughout the entire day for all of those beautiful portraits. I love it for the reception details as well to get that really beautiful bokeh on your images. So I'll use this throughout an entire wedding day. It's one of my most used lens, the 85, for that really beautiful bokeh and compression in your images. The 35 millimeter, I'm really using when I'm wanting those wide shots. So this might be during that getting ready portion of the day if I'm getting top down flat lay photos. I'll either use this or I'll use my 24 to 70. I really like because I'm able to zoom in and kind of get the flat lay perfect. This is a great lens for that. And also for any kind of zoomed out portraits, portraits of like the girls together, the guys together, the wedding party. I love that I have a 1.8 so I can get that really nice look to the images while getting a little bit wider. So with this lens, I will not do tighter portraits because you will get distortion in the images. So anything closer than waist up, I will use something like an 85 millimeter so that I'm not getting that distortion in the images that is going to be making people look a little bit more alien. But for any of like the wider portraits, the full body portraits, and for really beautiful, more like overall details of like a tablescape, something like that. I uh, love this lens. And then like I mentioned earlier with the 105 millimeter 2.8 macro lens, I'm really just using this lens to capture those close up ring details. I actually have a full video all on how I capture wedding ring details that I'll link up here. So check that out if you want a full deep dive tutorial into capturing wedding rings. And then finally, just a couple last little odds and ends. I use a couple SB5000 flashes and I like the mag mod as a diffuser system is really nice. I use CF Express and XQD cards. I prefer uh, Lexar brand over Sony's brand. For these cards, they're a bit more durable and I just tend to like these better. So that's what I use for memory cards. I'll be sure to link all of this in the description below. And then I also always bring a wedding photography timeline with me on the day. And in a previous video, I did a full breakdown on how I put together my wedding photography timeline and also included my timeline template. And the cool thing with this template is you can literally just plug in the ceremony time and it auto populates the timing for you based on either a wedding with a first look or without a first look. So definitely grab that below if you haven't already and also check out that video. And then finally, I also bring with me <laughs> a full styling kit for the wedding. And I have a full breakdown video on what exactly I include 
in my wedding day styling kit. So I'll link that up here if you wanna check out that breakdown of what I include in that kit. And then for my main bag that I pack everything up in, I'll also link a video on that here that shows, you know, just some of those extra little things that I include in my bag uh, and the bag itself, which is the Think Tank International Roller Bag. And I love this bag for traveling. It's been in all scenarios. I've shot in snow. I've shot in rain. I've shot in the desert. I've shot at beaches. This bag's been with me everywhere and it's lasted several, several years. It's just super durable. I love uh, that bag. So that's a peek inside what I have in my current wedding day camera bag. If you have any questions, drop them below. I would love to hear what's your current favorite piece of gear or lens. Are you using mirrorless or are you still on DSLR? Drop a comment, let me know, and I will catch you in the next video.